is up? Hello, it's Katie Colson here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Are you surprised to see me? Because I will tell you that I am surprised to be here, okay? I have finally, well, not finally, because I'm still emerging, but I am beginning to see the light at the end of this tunnel that I have dug myself, this giant hole in the ground that I put myself in by spending two and a half months working incessantly and ridiculously on one project. And then basically when it was done, I forgot how to live. Like, I was like, what do I do now? And if you're wondering, what video are you talking about? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Do you mean my white whale? Do you mean my magnum opus? My Moby Dick? My death knell? Okay. The process of making that video, let me put it into perspective. If this was a movie, you would open up, okay, on a tight shot of a girl building a sandcastle. Okay. She's, she's digging away, building her little sand castle. Now, when you start to pan back, you realize that she's digging with the tiniest Barbie shovel you've ever seen. And then you realize that it's not sand. It's actually dirt. And when you pan back far enough, you realize that she's digging her own grave. Oh, great heavens! But I'm very proud of it. And if you haven't seen it, that's a crime against me. And I'm actually calling the police. I'm actually. Oh, hello, SWAT? FBI? Wow. Twin brains, I was about to call you. That is so crazy. I was talking about how if you ever let me do the... Yeah, I know. I know. Um, we don't need to... You don't need to describe what you're going to do. Like, the detail... Leave something to the imagination. You oh, my God. Girl, can you get away with that? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am equally um, scared, intimidated, and attracted to you. Um, but anyway, tell me what's going on in your life. I don't know what I was just doing. It's like I went into a bit and then the bit was just never ending. Anyway, what we're doing in this video is something I did not see coming at all. And that is reading Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. Wow. And I put it on my unhaul, the video that I put out not that long ago. And I edited out me talking about this book because I took it off of my unhaul because I was like, let's try it. Okay. And I genuinely did not believe for a single second that I was going to finish this book, much less enjoy it. I was like a contemporary dark romance. Like, I mean, I don't even know if you, is this a dark romance? We'll get into it. Anyway, basically what I want to do is I'm going to be reading a lot of romance in 2024. And if you didn't know, I am asexual and aromantic. Okay. I mean, I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to tell because I don't talk about it all the time. Anyway, um, I'm asexual and aromantic and I have been feeling like I'm going to be in my dark romance era in 2024. And I need to figure out what that means and how my intaking of romance maybe is different than how the heterosexual or heteronormative. And I'm like, because I don't know the other side. Like when people talk about being attracted to other people or enjoying sexual, whatever. Um, I don't understand that. Like, I don't get it. I try to understand on an intellectual level, but I innately cannot relate to that. So I focus on other things, which are people's actions and words and motivations and intentions. So that's just where my brain is routed to. This is the longest intro of all time. Um, all I'm going to tell you about what this is about is it is a very toxic romance. It is rich people drama. They have this on again, off again, but never really off relationship with each other that is so histrionically and intrinsically intertwined that no matter what they do, they keep falling back into each other. But I will say that I will not be spoiling anything about this book. I will be discussing things in very vague terms if it comes to specific plot points. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay, let's get into it so that you can stop seeing this intro because this is actually ridiculous. Okay, let's get into the video. Girly pops. It is not early in the morning at all. This is the energy of it's 4 a.m. It is not. It is damn well noon. You know what time it is? Embrace your blob. Because seriously, nobody is concerned or bothered with what you look like, except you. Amen. Let's not talk about it. Um, I started this last night. I'm gonna tell you why. It's because I've had this on my TBR for a year. A year, Jesus. And then I bought these at Half Price Books 
last week, something like that. And I told myself I had to buy them because the new covers are a crime against humanity. They're not just a crime against the bookish world. They're not just a crime against publication in its entirety. They are an actual assassination attempt on Jessa Hastings. The new covers. FBI, open up! They didn't just come for her throat. They decimated her corpse. Like, they literally decimated her soul. She has no energy left. She'll never write again. Those covers... And I told myself, if there was even an iota of a chance that I was going to like this series, I had to have these covers. I get why these go for an exorbitant amount on Pango Books. Because we're just trying to, like, do what's right by Jesse Hastings. So, um, I'm not going to lie to you. I was absolutely sure I was going to hate this. I'm only 40 pages in. I got to chapter four yesterday. I like it. Right. Just took my breath away. I only got to chapter four. Okay, I've only read three chapters. I don't even know. I, I'm like, I literally barely know anything about this book. But I'll tell you that I already have five tabs and it's been 40 pages. So I like it. One, I am here to agree with all the girlies that say the writing is actually really good. The writing is really good. I'm very shocked at how good the writing is. Let me see. I mean, it's only 40 pages, so I don't feel like anything is a spoiler. But oh, yeah. See? I've already started annotating this. Um, so this is where like an ex-boyfriend or somebody that she's seen before um, sees them at a club. And he says, so which are you tonight? Her guard dog or her boyfriend? BJ. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to stop real quick. BJ is the worst. I know a guy named BJ and he's a lovely man. Okay. Um, BJ is the worst name you could possibly give a guy. Like. Horrible. BJ shifts in front of me a little, gives him a tight smile. I'm whatever the mm. she needs me to be. I wrote on there, okay, I'm sat. That one sentence has me damn well hooked. I was like, I'm sorry, people hate this book. I'm actually kind of living. And then it says, I ignore him and turn to look at BJ, his jaws tight, fists clenched, ready to throw down for my honor any day of the week. Okay, listen, you know, we do kind of love it. We do kind of love it. Like, I'm kind of living. Now, of course, I'm only 40 pages in, and it keeps talking about how he did something to her, and that she did something to him that was, like, so terrible. And I'm like, I believe you. I'm sure it's horrible, but I'm not giving up. Listen, I don't go into books hoping to dislike them. Do I believe that I'm going to love Magnolia Parks? I don't know. I don't have faith, but I have optimism. I really, truly hope I love it. And as of right now, I'm living. So yeah, I feel like I should have like brushed my hair or done anything before I talked to you, but I didn't. And I'm sorry and you're welcome. Okay, let's get back. Um, I'm concerned. I'm concerned for myself because, I mean, I get it. I'm only on page 62. But I, I, I don't understand why people don't like this book. I mean, I know a legion of women are obsessed with this. I'm not saying it's not toxic. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, maybe I shouldn't be speaking. I'm only on page 62. But let me tell you that Jessa Hastings writing, I'm screaming. Okay, let me tell you these couple sentences. And mind you, I want you to bear in mind, none of this is spoken out loud. It sounds like it, like if, if you, it sounds like it's being said out loud, but it's not. This is all just in their head. Okay. I wonder whether we're going to kiss. I always wonder whether we're going to kiss. We never do, nor should we. Our eyes hold like our hands won't. I love you, he blinks. Prove it, I sigh. <laughs> the... That's good. And I also feel like, okay, here's the thing. I, this is like when I was talking about like Haunting Adeline where I really enjoyed it. And I was like, I'm not saying it's not toxic. Of course it is. But in this... They're both toxic. So I think that's great. Like, I'm like, okay, y'all deserve each other. You're both toxic. Like, you're both jealous and, you know, um, have obsessions that are out of control, like addictions. Like, as far as I can tell so far, BJ is a sex addict. That's what it seems like is happening. I could be wrong, but that's what it seems like. And I don't know what to call Magnolia's thing, but like, maybe just vanity. Just like being obsessively vain and 
having to put on a certain persona. So like anytime she gets upset by something that BJ does, she has to hurt him back because she wants to be seen as like not being the victim of his crime, I guess. But they love each Listen, okay. I don't know. I don't know why I feel like I'm trying to justify myself because they're both doing it. That's why it's that it's mutual. Like they both mutually love each other and are mutually hurting each other. So I'm like, cool. Let's go. Like, would I want to do that? No. Would I want my friend to be in a relationship like that? Absolutely not. But am I having the best time reading about it? Yes. I am. I feel like everybody is gooped and gagged at this response. I'm only 62 pages in. I need to shut up. Okay. Maybe I need to wait until I'm on page 100. If I can do that, I'm going to try to wait to talk to you until I'm on page 100. Hi. It is the same position, but much later in the day. It's eight hours later, I think. Um, or no, probably like six. So I got to page 100 and then I, there were things I had to do. I was like, I need to go and do this and this and this and this. Like I need to go to the grocery store. I needed to make a return, like blah, 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 blah. I need to get a journal. Okay, so I needed to do that. And I told myself, I was staring at this book and I was like, Katie, do not pull a Tinder is the flesh. If you remember, which who would, this was so long ago. But when I was reading Tinder is the flesh physically, I kept everywhere I would go, stop, like stop in the parking lot and read for half an hour and then do whatever I needed to do. Come back in the car, read for half an hour. Legitimately, I can like specifically remember P.O. Box went to the parking lot, read for like 20 minutes, got out, checked the P.O. Box, came back, read for like 40 minutes, then drove like 0.5 miles away to the liquor store, stopped in the parking lot, read again for half an hour, went in and got my liquor, came out, read for another half hour, drove back home, sat in the parking lot, read again, read like damn near 70% of the book just in parking lots. I was like, you could have just gone home, done your deed, you know, and gone home and read. But no, so I told myself I had to leave this while I did errands. Okay. I talked to myself a lot in the car and then I also called um, Charlie and Jan to talk about it because Jan did not really like this book and Charlie did really like it. So I was like, okay, I wanna get two different people's point of view. And while I was discussing with them and myself, I realized what it is um, that I'm liking about this and what it is that other people don't like. So I didn't want to just say, oh my God, I'm really liking it. And y'all be like, what do you mean? Like I needed to kind of internalize my feelings about this book, but it is a toxic relationship. He'll sleep with somebody else. She'll get mad. And when she gets mad, she'll retaliate by going and pretending to date somebody else. One of those things will start, start the, the cycle. So basically either she will start pretending to date somebody to make him jealous and he'll get jealous and go and somebody else and this whole vicious cycle or heal somebody else and then that will make her go and um be in the tabloids dating someone else okay listen that is you know that's toxic obviously hi i'm sorry i didn't see you there i was too busy blocking out the haters when i tell you i'm kicking my little feet when i tell you i'm literally obsessed with them i'm obsessed with them i'm obsessed with their relationship it's so good it's so hot okay here's the reason she's not just like sitting there and letting him cheat on her she's like what the did you just do? Absolutely not. And then goes and like rages out. And then he does the same thing. And I'm like, okay, they are both absolutely obsessed with each other. Like ride or die in love with each other, but also like in love with themselves. And there is a lot of vanity that comes with that. And they're both really rich. And that was a criticism I heard about this book is that people don't want to read about rich people problems. I'm not getting that vibe. Like that doesn't bother me. Like, yeah, there's a brand names mentioned, but like, I didn't care. I don't care. I think it's really good. And another thing where I was like, okay, am I toxic? I mean, everybody is in some way, right? But something that the guy, VJ does in this book is there is one moment at a party. Um, hi, breaking in because the girl that you just saw on the screen went on and on about this moment in this book for so freaking long. So let's cut it short. Basically, they go to a party. Magnolia thinks that BJ is going to come there and be with her, but he brings a friend. It just happens to be that the friend he brings is Tara, who is a girl. And Magnolia assumes that that means that they're sleeping together, even though BJ swears that they're not. So Magnolia is very insecure, throws a fit, gets them in the tabloids again, screaming, crying, and she leaves. Okay, let's get back to it. The next day he goes over to her house and uh, he has a 
shopping bag, a Chanel shopping bag with him. And he's like, are you mad at me? Like on a scale of one to 10. And she's like, um, a 10, but what is that? And he throws it to her and she's like, what did you get? And he was like, what I knew you'd want. And she opens it and it's a Chanel handbag that's pink. It's like pink lambskin. And she's obsessed with it. And I love that because, okay, here's the thing. That's so Donna and Harvey. Like if you watch Suits, I'm obsessed with that relationship. And anytime Harvey does something that he ends up realizing he was totally wrong and pisses Donna off, instead of apologizing really, he'll just go out and buy her a Chanel bag. That's what he does. And this is the thing. It's not like they're buying her love, like Harvey or BJ. This is why I love this is because it's a grown man, grown man, going into a Chanel store alone, a store that predominantly is only women shoppers, okay? Goes into this store to buy a pink handbag or for Harvey, whatever color, buy a pink handbag by themselves. Not only is there no shame, None. No, they're going out to get their girl a gift. Okay. Not just that, but that they buy something that that girl will love and they know it. Do you know how hard it is to buy things for people? Very hard. Nailed it. The fact that they, that BJ knows Magnolia so well that he's like that bag. She would love that. And she does. Oh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with that. I love it. Now, do I think either of them are good people? They have good traits about them, but they are not categorically good people. And, you know, they have very, very big flaws about them. Now, I wouldn't say they're bad people. I don't think that's true at all. Listen, I um, I have to come to terms with my own toxicity. This is the thing. And something I'm realizing about myself with romance is it has to be mutual. It has to be. They both have to be giving what the other person gave and give. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't, because that sense didn't make any sense. But I will say that the part that I remember that I stopped and was like, nope, mm -mm, gotta go back, is BJ remembering when he first met Magnolia and she was four years old. Oh, it's so cute. And he's like, he's playing some sort of sport. I don't remember what it is, but he's playing some sort of sport and she's four and she's like, oh, wow, you're really good at that. And he's like, thanks, like, attention. And she's like, I bet I could be better at it if I tried. And in his little, little boy brain, he thinks, oh, I have sisters. I know she could be better at this than me if she tried. Like, I have no qualms believing that. But just the way he says it, like, yeah, I have sisters. Like, they could beat my, like, I'm like, oh my god. I love that. I'm swooning. I'm swooning. And if you're wondering like, oh, okay, Katie, like how sure are you? Well, not sure, but how much are you living and loving? What I'll say, I own all of these, okay? Um, and when I tell you that I went on Blackwell's and bought all three of these again and the two that I'm missing, including the one that's coming out in February, yeah, I did. I did, they were $17 each because the fifth book is only being printed in the original cover style in the UK. So I went to go buy that. And then I realized the UK printings of these are taller than the US printings. We can't have that. We can't have that. And I was like, let's just buy the whole set again. I'm only 102 pages in and I bought five bucks just now on the internet. How long have I been talking? I'm so sorry. Okay. I need to go back to the beginning of chapter 11 and read this because I swear to God, I'm going to be on the freaking floor. I'm going to be on the floor with this flashback. I'm so, okay. I'm so excited. Okay. I need to shut up. Bye. This is what happens when I hold on to all the books that I'm considering unhauling and put them under Q, not Q, pan, pan in, pan over, whatever. I put them under there and I wait, waited till the end of the year to decide whether or not I was going to unhaul them. Some of them, spoiler alert, I did not unhaul. So far, I think there's four that I'm going to put back on my TBR on my shelf. Anyway, but this is what I've been doing for the past two days, which is why I haven't been able to read as much, which is killing me because I'm loving this book. But yeah, I have to carry all these to my car, which I'm not looking forward to. But let me show you how far I am into the book. It is hidden under here. Let's get this swill out of the way and show you that I did indeed have to um, put a new tab for Tom England because everybody says he's amazing and I need to know. 
Oh, hey. Um, I got to page, what is that? 172. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up as well as the other two books on Pango Books, whatever I get the new ones in. And I'm going to put it up. I'm going to keep fully annotating this because honestly, if it were me, I would love to get a copy of this book. Like, or I would love to get a copy of a book that's annotated like this because it's like you're reading it with a friend and it's always unhinged. Anyway, lol. I'm not showing my face because again, I'm sick, but I'll get back to you. Hopefully not feeling worse later today. Hi, hello. It is after work on Saturday. The days, they're blending. Um, if you, listen, if you know, you know. If you know, you know what I've been doing in January and how it's been going, you might be like, oh my God, why does your hair look like that? <laughs> Psychotic break, that's why. Um, but 2024 is great, it's great. But also psychotic break. Okay, um, Magnolia Parks, listen. Somebody said it perfectly last night. They said, Katie cutting 10 to 12 inches off of her hair and also loving Magnolia Parks was not on my 2024 bingo card. You summed it up. You summed it up perfectly. It wasn't on mine either. And I realized something when I was reading it that I was, everybody was like, oh my God, it's so toxic. Like, I can't believe that you're reading this. Like, oh my God. And when I put it on Goodreads that I was reading it, I had three different comments, comments saying specifically, I can't wait to hear the rant about this. Honey, honey, sweetie, boo boo. I'm obsessed with this. I love it. Five stars. I will be so shocked if this does not get five stars. I am actually like, this is the best book of the year already in January. I am obsessed. Now, let me tell you why. I know I've said a lot of things like, well, and this and this and this. Something I realized while I was talking about this last night on Sprints, and I was like, oh, wow. Okay, we're working through things. We're getting it. I am not someone that reads a lot of romance, and I'm asexual and aromantic. I have never really diagnosed, like, romances and what it is that in romances I will really vibe with and like. And with this, oh my god, it made so much sense. It makes so much sense. And this is what it is. Obviously, the thing that people are focused on the most in this with not liking it and it being toxic is the cheating. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Do I condone cheating? Absolutely not. No, I do not. Don't be like, oh my God, Katie is totally okay with guys cheating on their girls. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm like really defending myself so hard in this video. Anyway, the thing that I realized about this is it's the histrionic intimacy good way to put it. <laughs> okay. Um, these characters have known each other for so long. They have shared so much of their lives together intimately, not just childhood memories. I mean, their first time with each other, their first kiss with each other. They have experienced every single part of each other's bodies, every single part of growing up, adolescence, of intimacy, of emotional intimacy. And that's something that you cannot Intrinsic, intrinsically unwind from each other. You just can't. Um, the only way to do it is if one of them dies. And even then, there's always that shell of them. And I think, this is something I really love, is there's a moment where there's someone that Magnolia is seeing in some way, and she gets really upset about something. That's a big deal. And the guy that she's seeing, his first instinct is not oh, like, let me, you know, whatever. His first instinct he knows is, where's BJ? And she says, he's so-and-so, he's wherever. And he's like, okay, we're going there. And he drives her to BJ because he knows, even though he's the one that she's with, that she doesn't need him, she needs BJ. And I think that in a friendship point of view, that's amazing. 
obviously this is more than that. But in a friendship point of view, I'm like, I really like that this guy that she's with knows that she needs this friendship consolation more than she needs this new thing that she has with this boy. She needs him over this guy. I don't know. I really love that. And listen, I'm trying to work things out because I'm like, I'm trying to defend myself. Like I'm literally obsessed. Okay. This is where I was like, the assumed intimacy is, she says, I need a shower. She gets up and starts walking there, then pauses without looking back. Are you coming? I stand up wordlessly, follow her in. Don't read into it. She's done this forever. She doesn't like being in bathrooms by herself. Doesn't like to be alone with her thoughts. Her brain gets loud in the shower. I sit on the edge of the bathtub, stare at my hands, do my best not to peek out of the corner of my eyes and watch her get undressed. He just knows that about her. He just knows that it's not sexual. It's not romantic. It's she doesn't like to be alone with her thoughts. She doesn't like to be in bathrooms alone. They're small, they're enclosed. She doesn't like that. She's like, are you just gonna be with me? Just like, be there with me. And I'm like, that is so soft. You know, that's so vulnerable. That's what it is. It's vulnerable. It's the intimacy of, of the, that person knows you. You don't have to explain. You don't have to defend. They just get it. And they do it because they get you. I want to say that I'm going to stop defending myself, but um, I know I'm not. I'm on page 226. And I'm loving it. I, listen, I'm loving it. Okay. Let me cut to hopefully like maybe 50 more pages read. Y'all, I opened my door. Ah, it's here. Now, it looks incredibly damaged, but you know. Oh, oh Jesus. Part of me is like, do I buy it again? And the other part of me is like, you know what? You just got to deal with what you got. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to ask for an exchange. This one isn't that bad, but like it's all yellow. I don't know if you can tell because this light is really yellow. But like, because it got rainwater all over it. But then this one, oh no, honey. 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 It's all war, like, it's like mushy. No, can't do that. I'm sorry. Everybody makes mistakes. Because no one can be perfect. It was just one kiss, but that don't justify it. I know what I did was wrong. But it's like I did it just to spite you Because all we ever do is fight Oh, and I really think it's time we say goodbye Baby, I'm too fed up with us I can't take no more screaming Hurting each other's feelings Baby, I'm just too tired and tired And you don't wanna listen it's better we leave it all behind It hasn't always been like this Remember when we were in love You were always there for me we could talk for hours I don't know what happened to us Oh, cause we bring each other down right now And I don't even know why You know I really think it's time we say goodbye Baby, I'm too fed up with us I can't take no more screaming Hurting each other's feelings Maybe I'm just too tired to talk And you don't wanna listen It's better we leave it all behind Hi, hello. Um, we are still doing this video. It's still happening. It's been, at this point, almost... Has it been over two months since I started this book? Wow. 
Oh, I'm glad I caught that on camera. You see the goosebumps? They're real. Um, I am, let's see, 56 pages into annotating uh, or transferring my annotations. Now, it's so hard because I just want to like, I need to like reread the book to put all my annotations in it because even though this is a lot of annotations for 56 pages, that's not enough because I know I'm going to have way more because like, look at how many are in the first of this. That was when I wasn't really sure what I was doing and I wasn't sure, like I didn't realize that the friend group was going to be so good. And now that I'm going back and looking at it, the, okay, if you've read this, what we find out in the end did not hit me that hard. And now when I'm going back to the beginning, I'm like, oh, that would have hit me so much harder if I had known how found family this is. Where at the time, there were so many characters when I was reading it for the first time um, that it was really hard to kind of keep track of everybody. So I didn't realize like how much I was gonna care about certain people. And I think that when I reread it, I'm gonna love everyone, but that's just making me realize that I did not get the full impact of the ending because I did not remember how much this person meant for the non-spoiler. Anyway, um, I'm on sprints right now and I'm currently editing the beginning of this video because it was forever ago. Like literally look at my hair. And then in the first clip, my hair was like down to here. Yep, but today I did have a package and I don't know what it is and I'm so excited because I'm pretty sure this is something that was sent to me by one of you lovely people. And, okay, I wanna see what the note is because I like to guess what it is based, oh, from Jenica. This one is on my TBR too. So here's to both of us reading and loving it this year. LOL, thank you so much for the booktube's favorite video. Thank you, I'm so glad. Literally, y'all don't even understand how proud I am of that video and how proud I am that y'all are loving it. That means everything to me. Oh, what? I should have known. I didn't even guess. I should have known. Seven year slip. This was in the video. This was number five of best books according to booktube of 2023. And I was like, how have I not read this yet? Oh, this looks so cute. Oh my God. Okay, the words, th this, uh, this is so stupid for me to comment on this. Why do the words go down to the very, like tell me, isn't that weird? That they go down to the very, very, very end? Why am I being so judgmental? Jenica, thank you so much. Everybody loves this book. And every time there's a romance that's in the top books, I always go, oh, well, I don't know. But last year, Part of Your World was on that list and I read it and I freaking loved it. And then you know what else was on that list? And guess what? I'm loving it. So LOL. Thank you so much. I will definitely be vlogging this and reading it. And oh my God, it looks like the chapters are short. Ooh, the chapters are pretty short. For like three pages each. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. Okay, I need to get back to editing, but I wanted to stop and film this so that I would have a moment to thank you. So Jenica, thank you, thank you, thank you. Take in its glory all of my unblemished, unmarked, as of right now, world map of bookish territories that I'm going to be marking off. So the first thing that I am going to do is mark off the United Kingdom. Not Wales, not Scotland, none of that, but just the United Kingdom for Magnolia Parks because that book does take place in London. So I'm gonna mark that off. I have not marked off anything on this map. So I'm kind of worried about messing it up or how it's gonna go, especially because there's very faint lines, you know, demarcating Scotland and Wales. So let's just give it a go and let's see. Oh my God, I'm scared. I'm scared. Cause like, I, it's the first thing I don't wanna fuck it up. Look at that! We have our first. Yes, it's so tiny. You can, but you can even see it all the way from here. That little pink dot. That is our first marker of things to come. Ugh. I don't know. I'm just so happy about this project. I really am. So this is just me living in its glory. Thank you for also sitting in this glory with me. Um, on to the next. Oh my gosh. Hi. You remember in the beginning of the video where I said I lost a lot of footage? We're hearkening back to that, okay? So I had, that I can recall at least two, if not three clips of reading the last 200 pages. I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened, I'm sure, is that while I was importing all of these clips and moving them from 
uh, iCloud to my computer to my hard drive, things got lost, things got deleted. I have searched and searched and I have not been able to find them. And I'm very sorry for that. One, for you, but also for me, because I was having a very deep discussion about this book and my thoughts on the relationship being asexual and aromantic. And now those are gone. Those are lost. But I do want to tell you that when I got to the end and you find out what you find out, which no spoilers, but when you find out, it did not punch me as hard as it will when I read it again, because even going back and highlighting things in my re-annotation, I realized how big of a deal that ending really was and how much it impacted that character. And I'm like, yeah. So I think that initially when I finished it, because I had such a long time in between beginning it and ending it, at first I was like, oh, should I give it a four and a half? Because um, the ending didn't impact me as much as I thought that it should. And I was a little bit annoyed that the characters kept circling the same drain. But then I was like, you know what? No, no, because if a book gets this much annotation, this is a five. You just, okay, you have to give it up for the girls. You have to give this a five star because this hooked on a feeling. Are you kidding me? We're all searching for this high. Okay. I absolutely love it. I'm definitely going to be jumping into the second book here very soon because I want to know. I want to know. And I need more of this writing. The writing is honestly delectable. It's so freaking good. But one thing I do want to say is that I, as I said in the beginning, do want to kind of understand a little bit where I fall in terms of romance being asexual and aromantic and I think I touched on this at some point in the video but the way that they are histrionically and intrinsically linked emotionally and with every experience that they have basically ever had in their lives not just childhood not just adulthood tweenhood whatever they have had with each other and that being like oh the first kiss oh like their first like soccer game um first like like the prom or learning to drive, everything has wrapped around each other where they truly do not know who they are without the other person. They don't know who they are without loving that person because she met him when she was four years old. Like she legitimately doesn't have memory of before him. And he has a memory of meeting her, but he was so young. He was like five or six. So like he doesn't really remember life without her or without loving her. So that is so interesting to me. And I think that being asexual and aromantic, it is a relationship that I really adore because, which obviously has a lot of problems. They are very problematic people. They are vain and petty when you're looking at Magnolia um, and likes to play the victim and <laughs> get her way in any way she can and being kind of like a tease, you know? Um, and then BJ is a sex addict who anytime he is hurt in any way, just goes out and has sex with somebody or does some sexual thing that, or takes drugs, drinks, just throws himself into danger, basically. Like a very type seven, I would say, esque behavior, toxic seven, unhealthy seven, you know, it's the Enneagram, if you don't know what I'm talking about. But obviously they're very messy people, but nobody's perfect for starters. No one is perfect. And every relationship has flaws. Now, do, do most relationships have these flaws? God, I hope not. I really hope not. But the way that they love each other more than they respect themselves is obviously toxic. But I love it because the way that they understand each other so well that they know the other person better than they know themselves. And the other person doesn't have to say a word. They just get it. They just know. And I think that that's something that is so almost impossible to find. And like garner and cultivate and feed, you know, to make it thrive. So it's like, yeah, they are very toxic and they are bad for each other, but they're also perfect for each other because they are both bad. And I, I, I don't think they're bad people. I'm not going to say that. I know a lot of other people have said that. I don't think so. I think that they're just messy. And this is another one of those like rich people problems of like, yeah, they can just get away with a lot, you know, because they're wealthy and famous. So... I don't feel like I'm really making any sense as to how I feel about this, like asexual and aromantic wise. I'm talking a lot, but I don't know if I'm actually saying anything. Sorry about that. But I will say that I was swooning because I'm absolutely obsessed with BJ Valentine. Obsessed with him. 
he's toxic but I love and adore him with my whole entire heart. Obsessed, obsessed, I love him. Okay, I'm gonna end the video here. Um, I know that it's been a long and rambly one. I apologize if it was boring to you in any way, but I don't think it was. Um, if you've gotten this far, then just leave some like rich people emoji. What, what screams rich to you? Just like, oh my gosh, like the, literally she's like the Taylor Swift of London, okay? Oh my God, that would make him. The Travis Kelsey. My worlds are colliding. Okay, leave one of those emojis down below if you don't know what else to say. If you have gotten this far, I am going to have my Instagram and Goodreads as well as my Patreon if you ever want to follow me on there because I do post way more on Patreon than I do on YouTube. Way more. Okay. Thank you all so much. I hope that you are all having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye. The library, darling. <laughs> because reading is what? Fundamental. That's right. That's right. Try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best.